I think it's the best bag I've made so far. So keep watching because you might want to do this one actually at home. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Today we're gonna do the Bottega Mini Jody bag. A popular demand. Two whole people, which is a lot for my channel. Asked for the tutorial on this mini jelly bag. We're also gonna do a pretty straightforward, not that difficult weaving technique. It's gonna make it look very intricate. To say the right word. Yes, that's a nod to the term intrecciato. You may wonder, intro what? Means woven in Italian. It's the name of the weaving technique that is invented by the house of Bottega. And we're gonna give it our own twist because we're gonna make the entire bag out of this old ravaged three quarters of an acid washed jeans. One winner later. What do you do on those days that you just don't know? Uh, pretend. Bang! Nobody. Ruler. No. Making the pattern was quite a process. I'll go through a step-by-step -step explanation on Patreon. But to make this video not too long, we'll just cut right through sewing the first sample. S -s sample. Oh yeah. no, I don't like to create extra work or any work. Oh hell no. In general, for that matter. But I digress. But oh uh, boy, was I glad that I made a sample first. Okay, babes, so uh, the memory card was full, so I've already sewed the two pieces together. I only have to turn them inside out and see what's gonna happen. Let the bag be born. Yeah, I think I need a magic stick. <laughs> Hello. Let the magic begin. A true magic stick. I even unclocked my sink with it just today. Uh. Yeah, that was gross. Thousands of tears later. Dust. Dust. Not in my coffee. Ew. I mean... Identical. Uh, uh. Well, this is why we sew a sample. Because this is not really it. Or let's be honest, really not it. At all. But I think some minor tweaks will get us a long way. The fabric on the handles need to be just a little bit wider. So I'm gonna add one centimeter on each side. And this will also make the knot a little less sad. Pathetic. Sad. <laughs> I felt like the bend in this line did not make any sense anymore, especially considering the weaving we still have to do. So I'm straightening it almost completely out. Do it, bitches. Uh, babes. Do it. Do it. Oh, I have to do it. Okay. Okay. So I copied the pattern to make the other half, which is exactly the same except for that the handle is slightly longer because we want to hide the seam under the knot. I know, genius, not my idea. But still, stick the two halves together to make one big pattern and then... <laughs> it always... Just does not fit. So I chopped it in half again, cut it out. So we're gonna do this raw edge intrecciato fabric manipulation. First creating a base layer that we're gonna cut in and that's why I want to make sure that I get the pattern straight out of the fabric so that the cuts will be on the bias, so 45 degrees. That way the fabric will be a bit more sustainable because the fabric will not have the chance to fray too too much. And we're gonna sew the halves together, the long handle side with the short handle side. Pretend it's one piece. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. I use that as a pattern for the lining. Kinda clever, except for, uh, not really. Kind of mature and I'm thinking about the lining already. See the progress we're thinking ahead here, as opposed to uh, every other situation the rest of my life. <sighs> Then I'm gonna draw a grid on the back side of the fabric, at least before I made up my mind and it ended up being the front side. A little suggestion to make up your mind before you draw your lines off. Or as opposed to yours truly, use something erasable for a change. So the diagonal lines are about one and a half centimeter apart. I'd suggest you don't make it much smaller than that because it might get a little messy. The moment we have all been waiting for. Well, not really. That's probably when this thing is finally finished. The point is, we're gonna make the cuts. I have to do this quite carefully because otherwise you'll end up with like big cuts instead of uh, small cuts. Don't ask me how I know. I don't do mistakes. I just do a uh, magic trick. Whoa. This is kind of alternating pattern. This illustration shows much better. Does not really seem to make that much sense, but it probably does because it's a uh, high fashion base. By the way, before you're gonna comment any nasty things about my hair, it's called the model of Judy Lou. You might want to look it up. Yeah, I've been off duty for a while now. 
using a really simple Stanley mask because I discovered that was the easiest to use. You may want to reinforce the fabric first already with some iron-on interfacing. It will make this whole cutting process a little bit safer. No, I didn't do that, but I don't want to talk about it. Good morning, everybody. Except it's not a good morning because I have to work today. Aww. But aside from that, time to weave, mother. Uh, I mean base. Therefore, I'm gonna cut strips of this one and a half centimeter, again on the bias of the fabric, for the same fraying, slaying kind of reasons as before. Then, I'm not gonna lie, I always found this needle a bit strange and slightly suspicious. <laughs> Bruh. But uh, at this point, it was like a needle in a haystack, literally, well, without the hay. But hey, it could really nicely fit my strips of fabric in there, and it was not sharp, so I could really easily use it for the weaving. Going up and down the fabric, like the tides of the sea, just uh, speed it up a little, please. I was ready to be all dramatic. <laughs> But honestly, this was quite easy. What's happening here, guys? We're weaving without a weaving frame or any kind of fancy supplies. Pretty cool. Can I get a life hack? Now I'm gonna use the iron-on interfacing to stick everything in place with my iron. Then I decided to give it a bath, do a little attempt to get the markings that I made on the back side, but it turned out to be the front side. Oh, spoiler alert, didn't work. It's dark blue, so it kind of fits the vibe, I would say. Does Nobody's gonna know. You don't know it? I guess you think it's part of the design? Uh. It's a little bit much rough. Also to dry it because it's still a little bit wet. <laughs> As you can see, like always, it was perfectly symmetrical and everything was lining up exquisitely. But if yours is not, just chop something off here and there and make it work. Nobody's gonna know. And just to be sure, tack down the edges with a zigzag stitch all around the seam allowance. And I've told you guys the tea before, I had a zipper phobia for a like, large part of my life. Basically graduated fashion school without ever really having sewn in a zipper. Uh. Yes, it's a real condition. It's on the Wikipedia. Shit. What can I say? Even the zipper was not a total disaster today. I'm ripping the zipper out of the jeans. Turns out it was exactly the right size. I know, kind of freaking me out. Never things go this smooth. I'm gonna sew in the zipper, first one side. And when you're reaching the zipper puller, stay calm, stay friendly, just say the password. Fashion wrecker. You will be allowed to lift up your foot, move the zipper, pass the foot, and so on. Or use a zipper foot. This probably was the point where you would want to put in your lining, but uh, I'm not, because I'm quirky. And maybe I didn't realize fully, completely, 100%. Let's close the bottom of the bag first, because, well, uh, that's what my gut says. So I do have some serious gut issues. But I digress. Like, I don't mean to be offensive. If you're someone who doesn't press seams open, in my opinion, you just don't deserve to live. But that's just my opinion. But let's not get too political. On a more lighthearted note, we're gonna close the other side of the handle. I came up with this very torturous method of leaving a little piece open and then in the end using hand sewing, blah, 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 blah. Hot it! I honestly still don't know what would be the correct way to go about it, but you can also just close the handles first, turn them inside out, stick one handle into the other, and then close it with a top stitch. It's gonna be hidden under the knot anyway. Or even better, check out the Alexander Wang bag tutorial with the Julia Fox jeans bag. So I suddenly realized that was the exact same thing. It's just that I'm not really the kind of person that, uh, well, remembers things. Turned inside out now, I'm just a little scared. Handles are not long enough. Because it's so thick for some of it that I can hardly make a knot. Well, did I just jinx myself again? Oh, there's no way back. Gotta keep it moving. So I'm going to the lie, 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 lining. Cut the handles off because I felt like the fabric was thick enough. Just gonna sew one side onto the zipper and then the other. Like always, probably totally wrong order. And then close the lining together itself, leaving a hole to let the bag be born again. I guess that was kind of not how you should do the lining. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of in there. After the moment of truth, the bird of the bird. <laughs> Two very boring minutes later. Oh. It's just a knot, guys. Don't know what to say. Like you don't know how to make a knot, go back to primary school. Now I can sew these back together, hopefully. Yeah, and don't forget to give you some machine thread. 
Otherwise, it's gonna act up like a baby. And when you sew the handles back together, you can close the lining with a hand stitch. So, if you enjoyed the video so far and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Give a thumbs up, it helps me within the algorithm. And let me know which bag I should sew next. And if you like these jeans with bleaching and distressing, I will link the tutorial as well. I will...